Shastras are revered as ancient texts of wisdom and guidance. They're like a steadfast guiding light in our lives. They help us find ways through life's challenges. These scriptures not only provide us with timeless knowledge, but they also offer valuable and unique insights to help us navigate the complexities of our human existence. Dr. Tony Nader, who's a medical doctor trained at Harvard University and Massachusetts Institute of Technology with a PhD in neuroscience, is globally recognized as a Vedic scholar. As Maharishi Mahesh Yogi's successor, Dr. Nader is the head of the international meditation organizations in over 100 countries. Dr. Nader's vision is to bring happiness, health, and peace to the minds and hearts of the whole world. To talk to us more about Shastras, our guiding light, I would like to welcome Dr. Tony Nader. Uh, namaste, Pranam, Your Holiness. It's a great joy to be with you and congratulations on this wonderful achievement on the Mandir level, but also on the level of the soul, on the level of being, on the level of spirituality, on the level of maintaining forever the memory of knowledge, not only in the memory, but also in the heart and in activity. It is my humble joy to share with you something that I have learned from His Holiness Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, my teacher, my guru, about the Shastra, about the Veda, and my honor to be with you and to share these points that have been already proclaimed in so many ways from a scientific perspective. What is Shastra? It's Smriti, Shruti, Puran, it's all the Vedas, Rig Ved, Sama Ved, Yajur Ved, Atharva Ved, Shiksha, Kalpa, Vyakaran, Niruk, Chan, Jyotish, Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Samkhya, Yoga, Karma, Mimansa, Vedanta, Upanishad, Aranyak, Brahmana, Itihas, Puran, Smriti. <laughs> and all the Pratishakyas, and in the Itihas, of course, Ramayana and Mahabharat. Maharishi has organized these as a perfect science of life, and he has seen them as the expression of natural law, the laws of nature. Today, science is looking to understand how the universe works, how things come together, from where they come and they come from an ocean of pure consciousness, pure being, nirgun nirakar brahm, without qualities on its infinite, unbounded, unified value that is the source of everything, that is the source of sagun sagar brahm, brahm that expresses itself into multiplicity. How this happens? and the fine level of pure consciousness, which is our true inner self for ourself, emerges from the field of para, pasyanti, madhyama, and baikari, from silence to feeling, to fine thoughts, to sound. And that is the experience of the rishis who have transcended the surface value, went into nirgun nirakar brahm, which is pure consciousness, pure being, and experienced the dynamics of the self-referral level of being, of satchit ananda, that consciousness which is pure and bliss. Looking into itself, it reverberates, and in this reverberation, it's like the ocean starting to create the waves on the surface. And if one's consciousness is well established on that level, then one can also see the waves within the ocean. And that's what the rishis have seen. They have seen the Veda reverberating, knowledge, pure knowledge, pure silence, pure being reverberating. And that's how Veda comes. 
Mantra Brahmanayor Veda Nam Dhyam. Maharishi explains Veda is mantra and silence, sound and silence. And since this sound and silence reverberates as the laws of nature, it expresses itself into that Veda as sound, <coughs> into Vishva, into also Sharir, which is our own human body. And since we are able to transcend, we are able to experience moksha, we are able to experience brahmi chetana, that means our system, the dynamics of our physiology is able to sustain such level of consciousness. And that is why we can say, aham brahmasmi, sarvam kalvidam brahm, I am totality. And Maharishi took this literally. And many prophets and traditions have said that humans are made in the image of God, <laughs> that we are that. And if Veda is also that, if Veda is the expression of total natural law, and if total natural law is available in our own human physiology, then as a scientific simple conclusion, Veda must be like our human physiology. So he has asked me as a scientist, as a neuroscientist and brain scientist and having studied physiology in depth, to compare the structure and function of Veda with the structure and function of our human physiology. <clears throat> and he gave me the Veda, these 40 aspects of the Veda, and taught me what is their function, each of them, and what is their structure. What does it mean, their structure? Take the yoga book of Patanjali. It has four chapters, so that is its structure. Each chapter has a number of sutras. Take Nyaya, it has four divisions, and the first part of it defines its function, pramana, prameya, samshaya. What does it do? 16 parts. What does Nyaya do? It is a structure of, Marishi explains it as distinguishing and deciding, like the lamp at the door that sees the outside and sees the inside. So I looked at the brain and I found that there is a structure there which is called the thalamus that corresponds to that ability to connect the specific to the holistic and it must be nyaya. So in terms of function, it is fabulous that all the levels of the Veda are available in our physiology. But what is absolutely unbelievable to me at that time and now I understand it more is that the structure is the same so the thalamus has five divisions, exactly like the five divisions of Nyaya. The thalamus has 16 nuclei that correspond one to one to the 16 functions of Nyaya. Yoga is a unifying value. What unifies things in our brain is something called the association fibers between the different parts of the brain. This brain is structured into four divisions, four lobes, and each lobe has a number of substructures. These correspond one to one to the book of yoga. And like this, the time does not allow, I would like to share more with you. Every aspect of the Veda is a blueprint of our human physiology. It's like a drawing that is on an architectural drawing design, and then you get the building. The building is a replica of the drawing. We are a replica of the Veda. Veda is not a created reality. It's Nitya, Apaurusheya. It is the laws of nature, and its sound and silence, its reverberation, it creates its effects. It has many, many values on philosophical, spiritual, religious, applied level on society, on buildings, on how to create health and happiness, how to live, how to build our houses. These are absolutely profound and valuable aspects. But one aspect of the Veda is also its sound, which means you can apply it in any culture and reverberate it 
and use those sounds to awaken within every human being, no matter what they believe or they think, to awaken the laws of nature so we can fulfill our full potential. And when the full potential is alive, then we become an incarnation of Veda, a reality of Veda. And that's what we see in the great leaders, in the great gurus of Parampara, our leaders, every leader. And I bow down to <coughs> Bhagavan Sri Narayana. I bow down to all the leaders of this wonderful institution that is creating Veda and every human physiology, enlivening Veda and building a temple for the Veda as an expression of divinity, of totality, alive in us as humans, physically, physiologically, and alive also in the structures that we are building. Great pranams to Sri Pramod Swamiji, Sri Mahan Swamiji, and all the great Swamis you today. Namaskar.